Welcome back to the channel everyone, Tojo here, back with another Pokemon TCG set analysis video. And yes, we have a face cam. I'm looking like Casper the Ghost with this lighting, but we're going to try out a couple new video formats on the channel over the next few weeks. So I hope you guys all like the changes. As you already know from the intro and the title, today's topic of conversation is going to be Rebel Clash, which is the latest card instalment release in the West. I'm sure most of you are well acquainted with it already. Before we start though, I just want to give a shout out to the consistent engagers here on the channel. You guys are the best. But if you are new here, I want to show you some love too. And if you fancy sticking around, the subscribe button is just down there. It's one click for a whole load of Pokemon. If you've been around the channel already, you might have come across my previous set analysis video on the Sword and Shield base set. If you haven't, the link is down in the description below. And I was loving all the feedback on that installment, it was great. But with that feedback in mind though, I'm trying to streamline these videos down and have more of a focused approach on things. So from here on out, they're going to try and focus on two main points around collecting Pokemon TCG sets. Point number one is going to be the breakdown build of the set itself. So here we'll take a little look into what that could potentially mean for the pull rates for box breaks and packs in general, and also take a look at how the set compares in structure to previous sets. For example, here it will be a comparison to Sword and Shield. Hopefully here we start to notice trends and see what direction the Pokemon company are taking with these sets. Point number two is going to be how many packs it actually takes to complete the whole set. So this one's for the completionists and collectors out there. I know you're here. So given that we can make a reasonable guess at pull rates based on other box break videos on YouTube and information out in the community, we can use my own program that I hold very dear to my heart to simulate opening hundreds to thousands of packs to see how many it takes to fill our virtual binder to the brim. So guys, you're going to have to excuse me if this format is a little bit all over the place. I'm trying the combination of the face cam with the screen recorder just so you guys can see what I'm taking a look at. So the stuff that's on the screen at the moment probably won't mean much to you guys at the moment. Um, so I'll give a little bit of a background first on actually what the program that I've written does. As you can see, this is the code that I have for on Visual Studio. I've coded this in, in JavaScript. Essentially, what this does is it creates a set list or a collection for, say, us or anybody, and you can then tell the program to open packs until it has completed the set. So what that means is it will log all of the results from every single pack and it will store it in a collection and log it to a Google Sheet document as it runs. So what we can do is run this several times and for each run, we will see the complete logged history in a Google Sheet logged in a table so we can see how many packs it actually took for us to collect the whole Rebel Clash set. So let's take a look at some of the results. Now, I actually haven't seen the tables themselves for each individual run. The only thing that I have done is scrape something from the console and put it down into the table that you can see right here. So what this is, is all of the runs from one to 10. We ran the program 10 times. And this is the breakdown of the cards that we had left at the end of the run. So this is duplicate cards of interest. So here from run one, we can see this is the breakdown of all the extra cards that we had for each pack. So we had 2,578 regular rares left over. So that's not including the ones that were in our binder. So these are like our spare, our bulk, if you will. And then we had uh, 765 uh hollow rares so that's just your regular hollows pretty simple and then the next is your ultra rares we have full arts and we have secret rares now it's probably a good point to cover what we actually class as hollow rares ultra rares because it can be confusing with the new sets and how they look all sparkly and crazy but regular v cards and v max cards are both clusters ultra rares now a full art is a full art v card or trainer card and then a secret rare card is a rainbow or gold card from the set. So hopefully that clears things up for you guys. So as I said before, you can see the breakdown of all of the extra cards that we had after each run here. So we have, for the first run, we had 2,578 non-hollow rares, regular rares left over. 
at the end of the run. Then we had uh, 765 hollow rares, spare in our bulk, 778 ultra rares, 245 full art rares, and 120 secret rares and spare. So that's all of our golds and all of our rainbows, just to reiterate. So, our uh, second run, we can see things look a little bit different. Now, we can normally make some kind of gauged guess of, of kind of how long these runs each took by these numbers, but we can never know for certain. So, here we had 822 uh, non hollow rares, 246 hollow rares, 225 ultra rares, uh, 87 full arts, and 37 secret rare cards. So, Hopefully that kind of makes things clear as what things look like at the end afterwards. You'll see, I'll go on to the sheets that contain the results for the actual pack runs themselves in a second. But the first I'm going to cover the pack odds and the rarities for each individual pull in each pack first. So, as you can see from the screen here, this is where I define the pack odds. This screen is for our previous set list, which was Sword and Shield. So I'm going to head over to Rebel Clash, which is pretty much identical. We just changed some of the numbers around. And our set build is essentially, there are 209 cards in the set. There are 50 commons, 51 uncommons, 32 regular rares, 18 hollow rares, 23 ultra rares, 18 full arts and 17 secret rares. So if I can just split this right, we can take a look and compare that to Sword and Shield and see how the sets differ. Now, Sword and Shield base set is a little bit bigger. Yeah, sure, there's more cards in the set, that's true. However, the common, uncommon and regular rare counts are, the regular rare count is the same, but the number of commons and uncommons in the set is actually smaller for Rebel Clash and it's actually beefed out a little bit towards the top end of the set. So we actually have an increase of three extra secret rares, we have two less full arts, but we have 23 ultra rare pulls, so 23 regular Vs and Vmax cards, which kind of makes a difference I think in the long run, or I would like to think that it does. So if you think in each box we're guaranteed to pull a certain amount of cards so that's either a you know maybe a couple of full arts uh, maybe one secret rare if you're lucky you've got a pretty good accurate kind of guess on how many ultra rares you're going to get and then the same for hollows as well so as you're opening packs the kind of tough cards that you'll always find really hard to kind of chase down and fill out the spots in the binder is always towards the top end of these collections uh, the top end of the uh, set numbers essentially so the more ultra rares that you have the more full arts that you have and the more secret rares you have Typically, that's going to correlate to the more boxes and the more packs you're going to have to open because they're the hardest cards to come by just generally. And if those numbers are larger, it's more likely that you're going to get duplicates of those rarity tiers as you collect. So let's get into the kind of box architecture and the pull rates that we would expect to see in Rebel Clash. Now, I'm not claiming for this uh, data to be totally, totally accurate. However, the number bounds are going to be pretty similar and the margin for error is kind of not really that much of a big deal and um, so what i have done is i've watched several youtubers on youtube open up booster boxes and i have recorded down all of their pulls from hollows ultra rares full arts and secret rares from each of the boxes and then taken an average and rounded reasonably to give us what we would expect from a box so in each box we are expecting to get one secret rare per box we are expecting to get two full arts per box six ultra rare pulls and six hollow pulls so that those odds are applied every single time we open a pack during the run of our program future tojo here just interjecting on the pack odds there i made it sound as if we were opening booster boxes at a time every time we kind of run this program that is actually not the case so how this kind of works is to put it simply or in like real terms is every time we open a pack you can imagine that being in real life say you walking into a store and basically having a fresh booster box open in front of you and you picking out one of those packs and then opening it up the next pack is a complete independent kind of probability in that we get like a whole new fresh box essentially and 
pick out another fresh pack from a fresh box and then open that up. That's kind of how that works. Um, so yeah, it might seem a bit weird, but those odds for each pack, like I said, are applied like independently and they're completely fair in the sense that there's a 1 in 36 chance that we'll get a secret rare in that pack. There's a 2 in 36 chance that we'll get a full art and so on. And, and that's just how things work. I think that that was probably good to clear up and just make sure that that was 100% clear before we continue with the rest of the video. So we're back on Google Sheets and now is a good time, I think, to start looking at the results for our 10 runs that we did of the program. So each of these tables on each of these sheets is going to contain the full run, every single pack we opened as part of the program's run. And that means that we're gonna see how many packs it took to open to complete the set, how much that cost us and the cost of each individual new unique card in our binder so it seems confusing at now but hopefully it will be clearer when i click this tab so results set one we're going to take a look now so this is what the tables look like and so for each of these rows is us opening a pack so we can see in each pack we're going to get five commons three uncommons and a single rare slot so we can see here that we managed to pull five commons, three uncommons and an ultra rare in the first pack. And that means that then we have here pack count of one and then we have a cost per unique single. So what that means is it splits. So when we spend four pounds on a pack for that's the recommended retail price that then we divide that total cost by the number of cards that exist in our binder. So we're going to be able to see at the end of each run how much each of each card in our binder cost us to put in that slot so we can keep going down and our pack numbers just increase as we go down and we should be able to see once this stops how many packs it took us to complete rebel clash on our first run now as you can see we're in the thousands which is pretty crazy uh <laughs> that's not great oh we've missed it so this is what the end looks like for our first run guys so you can see here we had our 50 commons 51 uncommons 32 regular rares 18 hollow rares 23 ultra rares 18 full arts and 17 secret rares so from this from our 4485th pack down to our 4486th that is when we finally got the last secret rare for our set bringing us in at a total cost of £85 per unique single in our binder and that includes our common cards as well Now this might seem like pretty doom and gloom territory and it's it's pretty horrible but you know like I said in my previous video or uh, the previous video in this series po opening Pokemon cards is a gamble you never know what you're gonna get and there's no guarantee that you're just always gonna get new cards that just it's just not how things work as these sets kind of change and evolve the builds always constantly changing and it means that everyone's experience is going to be different no matter what the set looks like it's not always going to be this bad but this run wasn't great so let's take a look at the second run so you can see our second run here guys and we're in a position where it took us 1417 packs to complete our rebel class clash god it's i i've said rebel clash so many times that i'm starting to develop a lisp um 1417 packs to complete our rebel clash set so not as bad as the last run but still seems like a lot of packs right but the total cost here per unique single so each card in our binder cost us 27 pounds and 12 pence roughly so not looking as bad as the previous run, but still not great. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the third run. Much, much better. Um, I, think, I mean, this is crazy. The variance for these three runs is, is huge. So the first run took us over 4,000 packs, and this run only took us 589 packs, which is absolutely nuts. Um, so we came in at a total cost of £11.27 pence per card in our Rebel Clash binder. Now, remember that the total cost comes in at 589 packs times 
the retail cost, which for this run, I will pop in over in the overlay in the edit. So it gives you an idea of how much that would have cost us. Um, but in terms of how much the set would have cost us to complete, you also have to remember for each of these runs, we have a certain set amount of bulk in terms of just the rubbish cards. So like commons and commons, regular rares, etc., and trainers. But we've also got the tail end of our sets, which is our, you know, our hollows, our ultra rares, full arts and secrets. We'll have spares of those, right? So we can sell them on to make our money back. Um, but I think it's pretty fair to say that we'll always be operating at a net loss. I mean, if you're trying to pull every single card for a set just from booster packs, I think you're pretty much always guaranteed to have a hard time. Again, touching very lightly on the topic of last videos with gambling is that if you're betting against the house, i.e. the Pokemon company, you're never really going to win. For our fourth run here, we have 1,730 eight packs that we ended up opening for our fifth run we had 1636 packs that we opened for our sixth run we had 3074 packs that we opened Oof, that was a rough one run seven comes in at 2873 packs run eight comes in at 1781 packs and run 9 comes in at 1,989. And our last run comes in at 2,996 packs. So, a little bit all over the place. Um, like I said, I would expect, given that this is a game of chance when you're opening packs, for there to be a little bit of kind of leeway of things jumping about. But like we did with the last video, I'm going to go ahead and populate this data into a chart so that you guys can kind of visualize the experience of the pack opening as it went through for each run. Okay, guys, so I finally finished putting together this chart which shows us a little bit of data to do with how long it took for each run to complete the set the red dotted line that you can see is the point at which each run once it reaches it means that it has completed the rebel clash set in our binder so here you can see this run right here this yellow line that was actually our shortest run our quickest run therefore it is reached the bar first which means it was our best so i'm going to try and fiddle about with the settings to try and make this kind of point in the curve a little bit clearer so we can see a little bit more of a difference between each run okay so i'm not quite sure how much clearer this makes things but you can see the clear steps in these uh, graphs where we start to get you know new cards in our set i've kind of nulled that once we've kind of collected the first 150 cards in the set that experience looks pretty similar for uh, most of these uh, runs so it's at this point we start to get our first bit of divergence really uh, in experience so yeah you can see this is the uh, good run that i was talking about where we hit uh binder completion point really really early and then we also have all of the others look, that look fairly similar, but really start to diverge out and kind of teeth into different experiences when we get towards the last kind of, from like the 200 mark onwards, which I think would be pretty, uh, pretty consistent with the general experience that I think most people would have. Uh, let's say if you had 10 collectors who all said that they were only going to collect rebel clash by opening packs i think most of them would probably have a, a similar experience in that maybe one or two of them might get really lucky and kind of you know beelined it for the finish and, and absolutely smash it and then there'd be other guys that are just stuck in a rut and just can't keep getting dupes especially towards the top end of the set and uh, it just ends up taking them way too long so um this day all looks good and everything, but you guys probably want to know what the magic number is for the average number of packs that it will take to complete Rebel Clash, which is a really good question and the average cost. So I'm going to tweak a few things in my program. I'll be back in a sec. I want to run this, say, 100, 200, 1,000 times and see what the average pack count is at the other side of it. So I'll be back in a second, guys, with the results. So what you can see on our screen now is some changes that I've made to the program. Nothing too crazy, just some pretty simple stuff so that we can start looping through runs easier. Um, 
you can see this variable up here is the number of runs. All we want to do is change that depending on how many times we want to run the program. And then at the end, we'll be able to get some average costs and some average number of packs that it's taken for us to complete the set. So I can run this for one run and we'll be able to see the results here, right? So logged in the terminal, we can see that run one had completed and we have our typical breakdown of all of the cards we had left at the end. So 1,343 regular rares, we've got hollows, ultra rares, full arts and secret rares. So in that run, we opened 2,314 packs, something not too out of the ordinary. Um, and then we cost, the cost actually was, um, £9,256 for all of those packs. So that can be found by multiplying 2314 by four pounds, which is the recommended retail price for a Rebel Clash pack. So because we only ran this once, we essentially had uh, the average packs to complete which is the same as the single run because we just divided by one. And then the total average cost is 9256. So if we want to change this up and run it for more iterations, all we need to do is just change this number, clear the terminal and then run the program again. So let's run this again similarly for 10 runs like we did last time when we had a more in-depth look at the results. Let's go ahead and clear the terminal and then run this again and see what the results are. So here we've got run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can see everything's in check. That looks good. Um, so yeah, run one we had three thousand over three thousand packs, two thousand eight hundred for the second, two thousand three hundred, well nearly four hundred, uh, one thousand seven hundred thirty-four, one five eight five, one six one two. 1679 2013 and 1001 1840 I can't read uh, and then 1964 for the last run so a lot of runs around the 2000 mark there so in our previous runs that we had the ones that we took our in-depth analysis in we had one run that was like around 500 and then one that was 4000 so it shows you how easily those can range but over a longer sample size of data, these kind of normalize themselves into a fairly consistent range of around the 2000 pack mark. Now, after these 10 runs, our average number of packs that it took to complete the set was 2078.7, so 2079 if we're being pedantic and want to round up. And then the total average cost was 8,314 pounds. 14 pounds and 80 pence over the 10 runs let's take this to another extreme though and really really flesh out uh, the number of runs so i'm interested to see what happens when we run this for 100 times a thousand times so i think a good start first is a thousand i think um and to reduce the noise of each run because we don't really want to look at that um, i'm going to go ahead and remove all of the or comment out all of the log statements that give us the individual runs breakdown and i just want the last bit of information and we can take a read through so i'm going to go ahead and save that exit the terminal and open a new one up fresh for us to run this program so let's see where a thousand runs gets us guys it's taken a while and we're finished so that didn't take as long as i thought it would um so yeah the average number of packs to complete the set obviously our sample size is a lot larger so we're going to get more decimal point accuracy here um so 2139 packs on average on a thousand runs giving us a total average cost of eight thousand five hundred fifty seven pounds and eighty four four pence now i imagine the more that we run this the closer we will diverge to the actual uh, kind of uh, the, the closest or the most accurate um average cost that we can get i don't imagine things will deviate too much you guys will see just on you know the basic rules of like statistics and probability the smaller your sample size you know the, sorry, the larger your sample size, the more likely you are to eliminate the effect of outliers in your data set. So, for instance, the first 10 runs that we looked at, we had the 500 packs and we had the 4,000 packs. Um, so those two, I would probably say, are you know outliers in, in the sense that the person who opened 500 packs got really lucky and the person who opened 4,000 packs got really unlucky. But the longer you run this program for, or, or rather the more runs that you complete, 
the less like or the less effect the smaller the effect those kind of runs have on the overall um the overall data or the overall results so i'm going to go ahead and just really push the boat out on this and run it i don't know 10,000 times and see what happens ah we have finished so after 10,000 runs of the program our stuff looks very very similar to our previous run so 2,133 packs and that gives us an average cost of again around that eight and a half thousand pounds mark of 8,533 pounds so you heard it here first guys rebel clash will take 2,133 packs or around 2,100 packs for you to complete if you walked into a new store with a new booster box and picked out single packs. Now, I think it's better to try and touch a little bit more on the first point that I'm trying to cover in these videos and compare what this looks like in comparison to uh, Sword and Shield. So I'm going to run the same process, make a few changes and see what the difference is with collecting Sword and Shield in comparison to Rebel Clash and see how those two kind of opening experiences differ and the comparative number of packs you have to open and the comparative cost. So let's take a look at doing that. I'll be back in a second. Right guys, so I'm back. I've changed over the setlist variables from Rebel Clash to Sword and Shield. It really is that simple. I just changed two lines in my program. Um, it'll be a little bit difficult for other sets because they have different structures, but for uh, Sword and Shield, uh, Sword and Shield era sets, if they keep following the same structure, it should just be that easy for me to keep doing the same thing where I just create a new file for a new setlist and then we just run it and see what happens. So let's go ahead and take a look at the method here. So our number of runs is 10,000. So I'm going to just drop this down to... Uh, I'm going to go for 10 runs and just see what Sword and Shield looks like, just to make sure that the program still runs as we expect it to. Okay, cool. So 10 runs finished, and the average number of packs to complete the set for Sword and Shield was 1,844, and that gives us a total average cost of £7,378.40. and pence. So a little bit lower than Rebel Clash, however... Just to be 100% sure, like I said, smaller data set means that some possible outliers have more of an effect on the total. Let's be as fair as we can and run this for 10,000 runs, just like we did for Rebel Clash, and see where that gets us. Ah, sorry, I got completely lost looking at some cards on Reddit, but uh, runners finished. Um, so yeah, uh, so it doesn't look that dissimilar to our 10 runs, which, okay, it's fine, that's probably, that's probably a good sign, but... Uh, average number of packs to complete the Sword and Shield set is 1,789 packs. Uh, 1,790 if we're going to round up and be pedantic. Um, but that gives us a total average cost of £7,158 to complete the Sword and Shield set if we ran the program, well, when, when we run or if we tried to collect the set 10,000 times. So we could go ahead and run this for, you know, 100,000 times, a million times, and I'm pretty sure it would tell the same story. But a useful thing for us to do here is to actually take a look at the comparison between the two sets. Um, so I mentioned earlier in the video uh, the point about Rebel Clash, even though despite being a smaller set, given that it's loaded the top end of its set, you know, the ultra rares, the secret rares, the full arts, more than Sword and Shield, that it was possible that it would be a more difficult set to complete due to, you know, the decreased likelihood of you pulling top end cards when you're opening packs. And if there's a higher count of them, you're more likely to hit duplicates and it's harder for you to pull all of them just by nature. So even though Rebel Clash, which we, if we, you know, if I do this split again, and we have uh, Sword and Shield on the left hand side and Rebel Clash on the right. The comparison is obviously Sword and Shield has, uh, you know, admittedly only seven more cards in the set. But the difference of an extra hollow, um, more ultra rares, and uh, there's only two, there's two less full arts, but then three more secret rares makes a massive difference in terms of that pack opening experience and it's definitely something to bear in mind with everyone opening up rebel clash and something that we should also bear in mind with future sets that come in with pokemon so it's, it's really interesting guys to just see the comparison of the two um obviously with uh sword and shields coming out at an average cost of about 7160 pounds and then rebel clash coming at over eight and a half thousand pounds in itself so 
interesting thing to bear in mind for the future of sets with Pokemon um, comparing the two and thinking you know Rebel Clash is smaller and from a surface level it might seem like it's easier you know you dive in it's not the main set it's not the base set so Pokemon sets have been changing year after year era after era in that not only are the sets getting larger by nature but the builds are changing all the time you know you think back to neo era having maybe just two secret rares we're in a set now where for rebel clash with the comparison of these you know sword and shield to rebel clash here we've got 17 secret rares in rebel clash you know if we're only getting one secret rare per box think how many that takes and then you've got to think about you know not getting duplicates and only opening packs back 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 in my day you know all this stuff it's kind of You've got Neo Era that has one or two, you know, you open one, two, three boxes and you're there. It's just something to think about, guys, and something to bear in mind for future sets and where the kind of collecting hobby around Pokemon is going. So, guys, that's going to be everything from me today. Hopefully, things were clear and you guys at least found some of this a little bit interesting. We've arrived at the general consensus that Rebel Clash is just a harder and more expensive set to collect than Sword and Shield. Hopefully, we've done a good job of covering those two main points that I outlined in the intro of my video. But if you guys have any feedback on how this video has gone, the format, things that could have been clearer, things you liked, you didn't like, leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Having feedback like that is super valuable for me pushing the series forward and creating better content for you guys in the future. That's everything from me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed to stick around for more content and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.